Hello and welcome to Los Comics TV. I'm your host, Javier Hernandez. And since this is a, a cartoonist channel, I figure today's episode we're going to do some uh, cartooning. We're going to do some drawing. Um, a friend of mine, Dr. Teresa Rojas, actually asked me the other day in a text, Hey, you ever going to do any drawing demos? So today's a good day to do one. Um, it would be kind of fun to see. Check this out. And... Um, let me know what you think in the comment section when it's all said and done. Um, so, you know, in the morning I had the idea what I was going to record today. So, but I didn't sketch it out. I didn't plan any, you know, I didn't do any visual planning. Um, it's a character of mine I've done before. Um, but just going to kind of keep it somewhat spontaneous as far as the actual drawing. So I'm going to start off with a, um, a blue, non-photo blue pencil in a uh, pencil holder, lead holder, they call it. All right, so you just put the lead in here and then I already sharpened it. And then I'll ink it with uh, my Pentel pocket brush pen. I've been pretty much using this exclusively now, maybe, I don't know, probably eight years now, maybe even 10. Um, and when it comes to like inking my comics. So I just fell in love with it. I used to use, you know, um, Let's see here. Got some stored away here. Some brushes, right? Ink brushes. Uh, most you know, comic book artists use inks or pens. I used to use those, but uh, someone told me about this, and I started using it. And um, I just I don't know. It's a little chunky and thick, but I, I kind of like that look. So now it's kind of the look I have in my work. I mean, right? That's the style. So anyway, uh, so let me just start here by. Okay, let me just figure out here what I'm, how I'm going to place this. And then, um, like I said, this isn't really meant... I'm not going to necessarily do this so I can print it or make a print out of it or put it on the book or something. But um, I do want to do, you know, more of a finished drawing than not. So I'm just going to play around here with, uh, you know, building it. Now, I did a test earlier. And this blue... Pencil lids sh should show up on the camera. Um, if not, it'll definitely show up when I ink it. But, you know, like I said, I, I did check it earlier. And, er you know, everything still seems the same. The lighting and such. So I think uh, you'll be able to see this. So, you know, this is just to, like, you know, figure out where everything's going. Uh, placement of figure. Figure out my composition and all that. Like I said, it's a little spontaneous, but you see it as it happens. You know, also something I wanted to talk about while I'm dressing the other thing too, I wanted to do some drawing just to, you know, because people do like to see that. So it's always fun to share, but it's a good time for me to just kind of talk about some stuff where instead of just having the camera on my face as I'm talking to you, um, I can actually, you know, give you something to of interest to look at. Not that I don't think my face is interesting, but you can see plenty of that on, uh, you know, I'm not shy about it. It's on social network. It's not like I don't want to be seen, you know, on camera or anything. It's just, this is going to be a cartoonish show. I'd rather show you comics and artwork and such. Um, so in one of the earlier episodes, I, you know, I talked about what the channel is going to be about. So, you know, and I already went over it, but basically, you know, it's going to be about comics and my work and uh, other people's works and things that inspired me throughout the years and what I do and such. Um, but so, you know, the technology has been around for years, obviously, YouTube and cameras and, you know, cell phone cameras and all that. And I've always thought of doing a YouTube channel. Well, at least for a long time I have. Um, well, it's just funny. I see, like, really be talking. And then I almost forgot what I was drawing. I was just I was just looking intently when I was drawing, but I wasn't really thinking of the whole thing. So I got to make sure I <laughs> pull back a little bit and then look at the drawing. But like I said, for me, the drawing is not like... That's not the number one priority. Like, as far as making a perfect drawing. If I was, I probably wouldn't be talking. I'd just be working on my own with music like I always do. But um, 
but there's no reason I can't, you know, do a really good job at, at, at this drawing. So, so with, uh, yeah, a couple of reasons that I finally, you know, decided, okay, let's, let's do the show. Um, be honest, some of it was because of the, you know, the current pandemic we're under with, you know, the virus and all that, um, with, you know, all the stay home stuff and it's, but it's not even just that it's, man, you know, the, the, the tragedies, cause that's really what's, you know, like we're all having not fun, but you know, like, Hey, let's do some stay at home stuff and keep busy and, you know, interact with people. But yeah, there's, you know, unfortunately the truth is some terrible, terrible tragedies going out there. But, um, before that, so, um, really quick, uh, a few weeks ago, actually, no, it was last month, almost, no, almost a month and a half now, but it's my nephew, Christian Silva. Um, he passed away February 22nd, uh, just like I said, recently. Um, he was a victim of violence, you know, it was a, it was a shooting, uh, what the sheriffs tell us, you know, wrong place, wrong time. Um, so yeah, but this is a little booklet I made. Uh, this is actually, it's not the final one. My sister asked me to do this, you know, in honor of her son. And we had these given out at the uh, the memorial and the funeral and such. So it was a little thing I put together. She asked me, you know, she gave me the picture she wanted. And then um, we did a thing on the, there's a picture on the back. This is daughter and his son. Um, a thank you to everybody for supporting us and such. And on the inside... This is upside down because this was just a proof that I had printed before we did the final one. Uh, we did, you know, I wrote a little bio of him for him. And then this here is his daughter. She wrote this on the back of a photograph that she left in his bed, you know, in his bed at the uh, hospital. So we thought it'd be nice to sh share that with the, in this booklet. But yeah, so, uh, you know, somebody grew up with, uh, you know, the day he was born, you know, held him in my hands, and, um, you know, now he's gone, unfortunately. But he, uh, besides being a musician, he was a tattoo artist uh, out here locally at a shop in the La Habra called The Blind Nobility. And, um, yeah, he started doing art years ago. This is something he did on Easter of 2014. Um, he gave, you know, he gave these to everybody on Easter, to my Uncle Jay, that's what they all call me, all the nephews and nieces. Check out this print I made this morning, and it's called Hand Painted. Happy Easter, Christian. So, um, yeah, well, great artist, and uh, even a greater nephew. But, um, yeah, his artwork, his art, uh, you know, as a kid, he was definitely... Uh, you know, he, he saw the work I was doing, and I was already doing uh, my El Marto comics and such. And yeah, he's told me it was definitely an influence on him, you know, getting into art and such, and definitely used to encourage it when he was younger with, you know, the cheap box of crayons and the cheap paper, that's all you need, and he'd go at it. And then he eventually, you know, he's got older, he got to start getting into more of his own type of art and graffiti art and tattoo art and yeah that's it's it's great to see him you know branch out like that but you know his, his passing away you know for you know obviously so many personal reasons affects you but you know you just think you start thinking more and more definitely more of mortality and such and I do a lot of work obviously I've been doing comics for 22 years so you know I have a lot of stuff out there that I've accomplished and, and it's in print and it circulates so you know, for years, I know I was leaving a, I know I'm leaving a legacy behind, you know, all, all us artists want to do that, whether we're singing or dancing or writing poetry or whatever, or doing our comics, we want that, uh, you know, that's going to eventually be left behind as something that we, uh, you know, known for leaving here on earth. So... But, like, you know, after his passing, I just started thinking about that more and more. And, um, like I said, I, I have plenty of work. But, you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, do, do, do something you've always wanted to do. And, you know, having a channel, that's been something I've been wanting to do for a while. And it's like, why not, right? All the technologies at hand, it's all free, basically, as far as loading it up on the Internet and all that. So, 
And then the other thing was, um, like I said, the, you know, the coronavirus pandemic worldwide, definitely here at home in, in, in the U.S., how, you know, that's just left a whole, you know, everyone's going through all kinds of emotions with that. Um, so I think some of it was that also was, you know, like, again, I said, I mentioned just being more aware of one's own mortality. Um, that, that definitely weighed on it too. Like, again, it's like, well, you know what, let me, uh, let me do some, let me do some I haven't done. Let me put something else out there in addition to everything else I'm, I've done and, and am doing. So, a YouTube channel seemed like, uh, at least for me, you know, would be something I could do that I wanted to do. And it's still in line with my art and, you know, showing art and sharing art. So, I think that's why I'm doing this channel. So, people have different reasons for stuff. Um, there we go. Yeah, this guy kind of looks what I thought he would look like. Surprisingly, right, since I, I created them. This, this is what I'm drawing. Um, this guy. El Cosmico. With someone's going to say, hey, he looks like El Muerto. It's like, well, yeah, very much so. But imagine a future cosmic version of the character. So put that aside. So that's what eventually what this is going to look like. Um, so like, you know, like everybody else, I... Uh, just, you know, making do with uh, what we're supposed to be doing, you know, social distancing, doing our part not to be out there, either potentially spreading this virus or definitely don't, you know, don't want to catch it. So minimize your social interactions and your, you know, physical going, goings and comings and, um, and, you know, I'm sure you've heard a lot of artists say, I mean, at first there was a lot of memes about it. You know, kind of funny, like, well, we stay home anyway. This is nothing new to us. And, and there is some truth to that. But like I said, as the weeks go on, we've been in this for, what, I think about three weeks now? Um, as far as, like, when it really got, what they say, hit the fan and really people hear, okay, we really got to start, you know, cutting this stuff down. Um... Just getting my thoughts here on the imaging here, on the images. Uh, what was I going to say? So, yeah, it started getting serious here as far as everybody really, you know, doing their thing. Okay, we really got to lock this down. So, at first, you know, we all just kind of started doing the first steps. And, you know, you, you I, I do watch the news. I've always watched the news. And, you know, I do something like this. Def definitely want to know what's going on and, you know stuff like that but you don't want to watch too much of it or I don't and I'm sure a lot of people don't um because it does get overbearing but you know I every day at least usually in the evening I uh try to catch up with the you know an hour or two and you know you keep hearing and you know right now what's what is it I said it's April 2nd I think we're almost at 5,000 uh, U.S. deaths and I think, I think remember just last week, like Thursday or Friday, it was like 1,000 and then just like, you know, moving up and up and up. So, and not to mention, you know, the rest of the world. So, but you know, we li I live here in the U.S. and I'm definitely thinking about what's, what's happening to everybody around us. So, uh, let's see, is that, okay. All right, I think, I think, uh, I think, He's looking the way he's supposed to look as far as what I'm happy with here. So, uh, okay, there's, we're done with that for now, I guess. Now I'm going to use this uh, brush pen. I'm going to test it here on the side, okay. Nothing worse than being on, well, it's not live TV, but, you know, you want to make sure you're equipment here is uh, working so i guess i could edit it right but i one of the things about this channel i'm trying to make it as simple as i can for me production wise that way i'm you know uh inclined to do it all the time um i don't want to make a production out of it i just want to you know want to do a good job on it and like, i think it's gotten better because now it's not being not it's not it's not a handheld camera now it's, uh, you know, I got my little camera holder thingy, so 
that helps. Um, but I want to keep it simple to set up and then simple to upload and such. So hopefully I never have to edit these. But if I do, I do. You know, that only helped the show, I guess. Um, so what was it talking about? Yeah, so that's kind of the reasons of the... Not to be morbid about it, you know, honestly, it's, you know, mortality and such, but I'm sure a lot of people in, you know, large events or personal tragic events, finally, you know, let's get up and do something you always wanted to do. So, um, in a way, if I inspired Christian with doing art, maybe he's kind of, you know, give me a little boost or a signal, whatever, to, uh, you know, do this, so we'll dedicate this episode to uh, Christian here. So let's see here, working on this here, keeping it quick, and, uh, you know, the thing is, when you're drawing something you've drawn before, or a character, you know, it's like, well, you know what the character looks like, so that's, that's always a plus, because they're not fumbling around trying to, like, find the uh, character but I did have to uh, figure out the pose and such but but this is pretty much how I work you know when I'm drawing a comic uh, these are the tools I use you know that blue pencil and then um, this inking pen so except usually I'm not talking to myself for the most part so when I, you know, when I work, when I'm inking and such, because it's always interesting to hear other artists, what they do, and um, I always have to have music on. Like, oh, absolutely. It's always had to be music. Um, you know, I used to listen to podcasts a lot more, but it just, for me, I really got to be just in a zone. And for me, it's music. Um, either, you know, um, rock or pop songs, you know, actual lyrics and such or even more so is a uh, soundtrack music because depending on the soundtrack you know it's just all instrumental i'm not having to focus on lyrics or get distracted by lyrics or whatever you want to call it and plus because soundtrack music is specific you know to the movie it's made for whether it's a uh, action piece or you know a moody piece or horror piece or whatever it it lends itself to um it lends itself pretty good i think to a uh, drawing and um sometimes you know it's funny but depending on what i'm drawing like the book or the story i try to put appropriate music um so if i'm doing like a comic with a horror element or a horror scene I try to pick some music in that vein, you know, whether it's, I don't know, The Omen or something like that, or, you know, if I want some good action, sometimes some spaghetti western music, or, of course, the old reliable, the uh, James Bond albums, soundtrack albums, uh, primarily by John Barry, but, you know, a lot of other people have composed the Bond films over the decades. Speaking of Bond, it's, why shouldn't we have had the new one, uh, what, a week ago, last weekend? No Time to Die, but, you know, of course, that was that was rescheduled like everything else in the world. Anything that's entertainment-related, sport entertainment, has been canceled or moved off, understandably. I mean, you know, being a comic artist, I definitely had a lot of, uh, like all of us, had uh, all the conventions that were planned, you know, like I said, postponed or moved to another time. I, I remember on the, uh, I don't remember the timeline, but, you know, after the government announced pretty much like the nationwide national disaster and such, you know, uh, that weekend at the supermarkets, that's where it all blew up as far as, you know, people going crazy and, you know, buying everything off the shelves, including the famous toilet paper uh, run. But, um, yeah, it's, excuse me when I stop talking. It's just kind of not admiring my own work, but I'm just checking it out and seeing what I need to go through and 
you know, adjust or whatever, finish up. Um, but yeah, so everything hit the fan and then, um, a few days later, I remember getting like two emails in a row, I think from two of my teaching gigs. I teach, right? I teach comic workshops and I got one, you know, that of course I was ex totally expecting those to happen based on everything else that was going on. You know, yeah, we know because we know the situation, the LA Unified Schools, so we're going to have to stop our programming. And then another one, very similar thing. And then there was another one I'm teaching at libraries. And then that one definitely, the, since the LA libraries went on lockdown, shut down, you know, the, the thing I was doing at a library for, you know, weekly class, that stopped as well. And then, um, you know, I had... Um, I had uh, actually had a trip planned. I don't think I ever announced it before. And probably just as well. But I was going to be going to uh, Louisiana State, LSU. I was going to go do a lecture there. And then uh, on the next day, I was uh, going to do a comic convention at a library. And then I had another speaking engagement. That one also uh, came to a stop here in California. But like I said, you know, that's all that stuff. Yeah, you're, you get obviously you get bummed out about it because like, well, that was work, that was you know income, but you take it all in perspective, right? I mean, yeah, the, like the news coming out of overseas in the beginning was pretty, you know, pretty eye opening, right? Stop you in your tracks as far as there's a lot of people out there, you know, dying and getting sick and everything, and then eventually it really hit our shores. So you take it all in perspective. You have to. You absolutely have to. Absolutely have to. Excuse me. Let me. All right. So, you know, I'm going to keep working on this. May not finish. I don't know. I may or may not finish it. Uh, I'm going to allow myself about 30 minutes for this video. I don't want to start making them too long. This might be the longest video. Um. But like I said, it's not like this has to this has to get done. But again, even if I I probably will finish it later if I don't I don't want to leave it on incomplete. But so it's a cosmic character. So we're drawing outer space. It doesn't look like space, right? Because it's not colored in black or dark. It's kind of interesting. Um, so just you know, it's, it's always I love drawing cosmic uh cosmic scenes that's definitely a, a staple of comics i think so meteorites falling stars whatever and i think i'm gonna for that i think at that point i'm gonna stop and start adding some uh color to this or I'm going to actually use um, gray tones so these are I've been using these markers for years now Tombow dual brush pen so they're dual because um, it's got the thicker brush on one end and on the other end it's got a way smaller like a harder fine point so and I fell in love with these, yeah, some years ago. That's what you do when you're an artist. You you know look around, you, people recommendations, whatever. You try different things, but then there's kind of sometimes there's one that you just love, like one brand, for whatever reason. So for me, it's uh, Tombow. Uh, so what's Who's El Cosmico? Well, here's the thing with this character. He's not in a comic story yet. And I've, so I noticed I've, I've done this with different characters, including, um, if you've been following the episodes, this guy, San Patricio, the little imp, who finally appeared in that little mini comic I had just done the other day, another week ago week or two ago so sometimes and uh, I was just thinking about it today as I was thinking of what I was going to say today 
it's kind of an interesting, I don't know, maybe it's been done before. But, you know, sometimes in a, in a let's say I talk comics. Sometimes in comics, um, you know, people will, they'll introduce the character maybe, like in the background scene over the couple of months, right, in, in the stories. You see little you know, bits and pieces and glimpses of that character until he finally, they finally debut it, right? Like a big reveal. But with the San Patricio character, what I noticed is, and now this, this guy, because of this new age we're in as far as like social media, well, you know, you could share, you could share so much stuff with people, you know, months or maybe years before... Like, you end up, uh, you know, putting it in a story. So, it's I, I, I like doing that. I don't know what that process is called or you know, foreshadowing or what. But it's not happening in the actual comic stories, right? It's just happening outside. With, you know, glimpses of here, here and there and previews and such. So, um, you know, like I said, because we have the internet now. And now, for some time now, it's just, I think, it's just an interesting way to just put something out there for a while. Almost like you're, not te not so much test marketing, because I don't put something out there like, hey, guys, what do you think? And people say, oh, change this, change and Okay, let me change it. Like, I, I, I don't really work that way. Um, if I want to work that way, I guess I'd work for a company and say, like, hey, you know, let's talk about what we should do and let's test market it. But I do like to put it out there. Maybe like, I don't know, plant the seeds or something. You know, pre, you're kind of previewing it without really telling people too much what it is. So here's, and now we're at this stage where, I'm just, you know, here's another, yet another preview I'll put out there on now on video and put on my social networks and, you know, until the character shows up in a, one of the El Muerto graphic novels. But when he does, some of you are gonna say, oh, I remember him. And then maybe most people will say, oh, look at this new character. So. Anyway, like I said, it's a, it, it's a, it, it strikes me as something interesting. Uh, I'm sure other people do it now, right? Because yeah, I don't know how many thousands of artists are out there doing their stories, and maybe they're putting little preview bits here and there of uh, their characters. But um, anyway, so we're coming down to 30 minutes. Oops. Um, I guess I'll continue a bit. We still got we still got a little time. But I'm just adding uh, different, you know, different shades of gray to this character here. Man, the time always, everybody says this, right? The time always goes so quick. And I say that when I'm teaching a class, right? I'm, especially when, um, especially when the kids are engaged. It's like you burn through the material, which is good. And the next thing you know, it's time to go. So I think that's kind of where we're at here. But yeah, I actually thought before I started filming, okay, I'll probably be able to get all the black background done. And then, you know, I was looking forward to using, this is one of my favorite tools, Presto. It's um, correct, they call it correction pen, but it's kind of like, I don't know if it's gonna show up on here. Um, let me think, uh, maybe I'll put some highlights. So look at, it's just, it's just white, some type of white paint. Right, it's made to make uh, corrections when you're writing, but us artists realize, hey, this is a great way to throw in some quick little white highlights without having to bust out a brush and acrylic paint. And then sometimes I'll just go over with black on that again still. Um, uh, let's see, let me, because I always assume when I'm doing these videos or anything I do, you know, not everyone I talk to is a 100% comic book audience, which is good. You always want to reach new people. You probably heard me say that before. You know, cosmic characters, are, again, they're a staple of comic. Everybody, I think, knows Doctor Strange at this point. Movie, movie icon. Um, but yeah, and this is a collection of 1970s Doctor Strange comics. Uh, so, you know, one of the great villains, entities created by Steve Ditko, Stan Lee, 
eternity. So, I mean, this is a great... I love that it's, this is just printed black and white. These comics, you know, they're not in color for the purpose of these books because these books were pretty cheap when they came out. I think, yeah, 17 bucks for 30 comics. Now I lost a page, but... um, Yeah, I got a great black and white art. It's the way it was originally drawn and inked. But yeah, you know, cosmic stories have always been... Uh, had long been a staple of comics, particularly, you know, in the 60s, Jack Kirby over on the FF and Thor and, you know, some of those comics. But really, these guys in the 70s really went crazy with this stuff. Um, I don't know what, what it was about the 70s. Maybe some drugs involved, but just this, you know, cosmic consciousness. And when you're talking cosmic comics, you definitely can't go too long without talking about, oh, excuse me. Jim Starlin, right? I don't think a lot of people know his work. His comics work. Um, very well known for taking over this well, Warlock, Adam Warlock character and just taking him to literally new heights. Look at that. Look at that cosmic craziness. So I remember reading these comics in the 80s. They were in reprints. They were pr printed in the back of a the Silver Surfer uh, comic that was a reprint as well. So, but look at this stuff. Crazy cosmic melodrama. So you may not, some of you may not know the name Jim Starlin, but this character, if you've seen the Guardians of the Galaxy movies from Marvel, that's Gamora, the original version of Gamora. Um, and... Look at that. Thanos. Also, so all these, these two created by Jim Starlin. Thanos, Gamora. And also the uh, character Drax. So, Jim Starlin, you know, created these characters back in the day. And, yeah, of course, no one knew there were going to be billion dollar movie franchises based on his characters. But, anyway, just a little bit of the cosmic uh, cos consciousness of comic book art. But, Anyway, this is, this is going to be my entry into Cosmic Sweepstakes. And um, and like I said, I didn't finish the drawing, but at least I got some of it started. And merciful, I want to mercifully keep the video short, or at least 30 minutes is, you know, I think that's long enough. Um, so anyway, I want to thank you guys for watching again. Um, I've been appreciating the comments people have been leaving on the YouTube page. If you could, leave a comment or a like on that, whatever episode you actually enjoyed. And um, if you subscribe, I'd very much appreciate that. Subscriptions always help. And um, you'll be alerted to the next video when it comes up. So thanks, everybody, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.